This is a Ramana Maharshi clip, a talk by Ramana Maharshi with comments by Richard Clark. This is a time to listen, reflect, and deeply meditate. I'm Richard. Welcome. I'm reviewing and commenting on the book, Talks with Sri Ramana Maharshi. Today is from Talk 95, Part Four. Questioner, it looks then as if even hearing the truth is limited to a very few. Maharshi, the seekers fall into two classes, Krito Pasaka and Ariko Pasaka, the former having already overcome his predispositions by steady devotion his mind thus made pure, has had some kind of experience, but does not comprehend it. As soon as he is instructed by a competent master, permanent experience results. The other class of seeker needs great effort to achieve this end. How will hearing the truth, reflection, in concentration help him they comprise upasana the nearest approach to the truth and will end in his self-realization the fourth stage is the final one of liberation even there some distinction is made according to the degree as first the knower of Brahman, the Brahmavid, then the Brahmavid Vara, then the Brahmavid Varya, then the Brahmavid Varishta. But all of them are in fact liberated even while alive. In this dialogue, the questioner expresses his concerns that only a very few people seem to truly understand and hear the truth. Ramana Maharshi responds by categorizing seekers into two classes, Krito Pasaka and Arito Pasaka. The Krito Pasaka have already purified their minds through steady devotion and practice. They may have had some kind of spiritual experience, but they don't fully comprehend it. However, when they receive guidance from a competent master, they attain a permanent and deeper experience of the truth. This indicates the importance of a qualified teacher in the spiritual journey. A qualified teacher for a qualified seeker. Akrito Pasaka. This class of seekers needs great effort to overcome their predispositions, their vasanas, and achieve self-realization. Ramana asks how hearing the truth, reflecting on it, and concentrating on it can help such seekers, then explains that these activities are collectively known as upasana, practice. Through dedicated practice, they too can attain self-realization. Ramana also discusses the four stages of liberation with some distinctions based on the depth of realization. The realized can be called yanis, one who knows. The first type of liberated sage is called the Brahmavid, the knower of Brahman. They continue to be fully engaged in society and the world, 
while simultaneously being liberated. Occasionally, afflictive emotions and passions arise, but they're short-lived and do not affect the Brahmavid. They may seem like an ordinary person with nothing particularly special about them, but they are often outwardly quiet. Next is the Brahmavid Vara. The Vara remains settled in Samadhi. The Vara feels concern for the maintenance of the body. Then there are the Brahmavid Varya. The Varya remains settled in Samadhi. The Varya becomes aware of his body when reminded of it by others. And finally, the Brahmavid Varishta. The fourth type of Yani, the Varishta, never becomes aware of the body, either by himself or through others, even though others may perceive him or her as a body. Despite these distinctions, Ramana Maharshi emphasizes that all yanis in these stages are in fact liberated even while alive. This underscores the idea that liberation is not a future event to be achieved, but a present reality to be recognized. Ramana's teachings here highlights the significance of devotion, practice, and guidance from a competent teacher. It also emphasizes that realization is not limited to a select few, but is attainable by all, given the right approach and effort. This understanding can inspire you to persist in your spiritual path, knowing that liberation is within reach for everyone. So inquire, know yourself, and be always free and at peace. These videos help bring Ramana Maharshi's teachings into your direct experience. Subscribe now 